Hey guys, I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop and on today's shortcut quilt episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a small wreath quilt using six half yards. Today, we're using Mary Starts Here by Sweetwater and if you love our videos, subscribe to us and click the bell to be notified when our new videos come out. So, let's get started. So to start this quilt, click in the description box to get your free pattern. And then what we started with is six half yards and we've cut a total of 54 rectangles that are four and a half by eight and a half. And then what we're gonna be doing the next step is we're gonna be sewing some strip sets together and I'm gonna give you some tips on chain piecing before we come back. But remember, you just want this to be very random and if you just had fat quarters, you could use 12 fat quarters instead if you wanted more variety. So let's get to the sewing machine. So the first step in the pattern is to sew together 18 rectangles three times. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start chain piecing randomly together. I'm using a quarter inch foot. And I'm just gonna put random pieces together. And then after I get a couple together, I'll tell you how I keep going. And this is my little tip on chain piecing. I keep going I'm just gonna clip and just keep attaching them as I go and you can see that if I do two two and two nothing is gonna touch and you want it to just be random some of the fabrics will end up touching and I never I never cut my thread to restart I just keep going because it just saves thread and time so I'm just gonna keep going So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew until I have 18 so I can show you pressing. So after you've chain pieced, you should have big long strips like this, 18 uh, rectangles, and um, you should have three of these strips. And I'm gonna give you some tips on pressing, and then after that we're gonna cut some strips. So the first thing I like to do is I do like to use steam and I set my seam by making it really flat and then press to one side. And I'm gonna just do that on every seam. Now, if you wanted to, you could do this as you go, but to me, this saves time if you do all the row at one time because you only have to get up from your sewing machine once because you sat there and chain pieced all of that together. So go ahead and do this and then we're gonna start cutting. So now we have three wreath subsets, and I'm gonna do three sections to show you what you cut it into, and this is the only time I would use a mat for measuring and cutting is when you have big long strips like borders or something like this. I would never, um, if I had to cut something six and a half inches, for example, I would not use my mat. So the pattern says we need to cut two 44 and a half inch strips. You'll notice I'm not um, paying attention to where the fabric starts and stops, I'm just cutting randomly because this is gonna be scrappy. So you don't have to start and stop at a certain point in your rectangle. So when I'm lining this up, I am trying to line this up on the lines of my mat. So we're gonna have two of these and then You'll see that this is just a small piece left and it's totally fine. And now from the first strip, we also need to cut two 20 and a half inch strips. And this is going to be our number two strip. Okay, and then this we're gonna just discard or you can save it for binding later or for scraps, just put it in your scrap bucket. So that's our strip one. Now we're gonna move to our strip two. So for the second strip, we're gonna cut two 38 and a half inch strips and two 28 and a half inch strips.
So for our third strip, we're gonna cut four 18 and a half inch strips and four 16 and a half inch strips. So now we have all of our strips in a stack and we are gonna start assembling our quilt. So what you're gonna do now is follow the instructions to make the outer wreath unit. And so you're gonna lay all your pieces out and I like to do this on my floor because I don't have a design board in my studio and that's okay. You can just put this on your floor and hope your dog or all your kids don't run all over it and mess it up because that's what mine would do. But I wanna show you, this is totally scrappy, but if you're looking, after I've placed it down on my floor, I've got some touching items. So what I will do is just flip that. So now um, there's a little bit touching, but not as much. And if I want to change, like we've got three going here, I will flip. I'm going to flip these. And so you can, um, it's scrappy, but you can still have a little bit of control over it and just take your time, lay it out. This is actually something also that my kids like to do. So I'll lay it out and say, well, do you want to move it? Or I actually give them the diagram and say, lay this out. So um, I like how it is and what you're going to do and what I do is I go slow at this point. So at the beginning when I was chain piecing, I was going really fast. I wasn't thinking about it. But here what I would do is go to my sewing machine and I would do the first row, stop, iron it, put it on the ground. Second row, stitch, iron, put it on the ground. All the way through, make sure it looks right, and then stitch it all together. Everything is very beginner. It's um, just a quarter inch seam. Now what I will tell you is when you're doing the strips, you're going to, when you put them, I can't put them right sides together since the strips are not sewn yet, but you're gonna pin at the very end, and then if you can find the middle of each, pin in the middle and pin twice then go to your sewing machine. Everything will come out a lot easier and a lot flatter if you do take the time to pin. And again, you're gonna make two of these units. So one of the best things about this quilt is you don't have to match any seams. So to put together your strips, what you wanna do is find the center. So if you find the center and put a little pin, this is the top strip. And then this is the next strip. And no matter how much experience you have quilting, I always do this. I mean, I've been quilting 20, 25 years. I don't even know how long, and I still do this. Um, just taking this extra time really helps. So I've got these two pinned. I'm gonna match up the pins and put one pin. I'm gonna put a pin in the on the left end and the right end. And I do this before I go to the sewing machine on a flat surface, because if you do it like on the side of your table, it's not gonna be as straight. And then I'm just gonna really flatten. I'll probably put three pins. And then you just go to your sewing machine and use a quarter inch seam. And by having it pinned, you're gonna get better results. For your last unit, you're gonna take your fabric C rectangle and four fabric C strips. First, sew your fabric C strips together, press, and then add your fabric C. Now this is the very center of your quilt. So this is the center, and then this is the top and the bottom that we made in the beginning, and you're just gonna put those three units together, and then you will add your side borders, and then your top and bottom borders. And now I'm gonna give you some tips on how to make the ribbon. Now you're gonna take your two fabric J rectangles, which are your bow fabrics, put them right sides together, and you're gonna stitch all the way around two long sides and one short side. And you're gonna leave one side open. 
On the side that you leave open, um, if you can backstitch when you start and stop there, it will help. But what you're gonna do is we're just gonna put, just put your little hand in and then we're just gonna go all the way um, to the very end. And we're gonna see how this works out. This is quite funny. Okay, so I'm gonna put my fingers all the way in there. I'm gonna kind of poke my little, you know what I'm gonna do before that? I'm gonna cut on the edges, little triangles on the very edges. And that'll help that um, not be as bulky when we turn it out. So then I'm just gonna, with my fingers before I pull it through, I'm gonna just poke my finger in there. And just, I don't like to use um, the point tools because I um, poke a hole through no matter how hard I try not to. Okay, so I've got that kind of in and then I'm just gonna pull it out. It's gonna, it's gonna work. We're gonna make it work. So I'm just pulling inside is where my hand is and I'm just pulling this. And ta-da, it worked. Yay. Okay, so now at this point, what we're gonna do is, I will tell you one thing that drives me crazy when I see other people's work is duck pleats. I hate a duck pleat. I don't, I don't like those. So a duck pleat means that your pleat kind of looks like this, where you can see the bottom on the top. So I'm gonna start on one end and just use my fingers and just make it as flat as I can using steam and just keep it super, super flat so you don't get a duck pleat. Um, and this will take a little bit of time. I'm just gonna get a little bit of it done and show you. So if you have enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you be a subscriber and then click the little bell and you will get reminders every time we have a new video. So right here you can see that it's just nice and flat and I'm gonna do, go ahead and do that on the entire thing. And then all you have to do is turn it into a bow and then over here what we've done is we put a safety pin here you can't see it and then you can put two baby safety pins one at the bottom and one at the top and one at the bottom and one at the top and then you can let this hang or if you really want it to stay on you could use like a really thick floss like aura floss or embroidery floss something thicker than a than a cotton um, well then a quilting cotton something a little bit thicker to keep it on and um, it's going to be a great way to decorate your home for Christmas so we hope all of you have a Merry Christmas and I will see you guys next time.